So what the heck is this thing? We'll start with this. We got a lot of other news today. Um, so this I found at a Tech Power Up article. It's AD106 against GA104 and TU104, although leaks and rumors, who knows the quality of the source? Is this 100% accurate? Now, if we take it for what it is, we seem to be seeing a bunch of you know 3D Mark benchmarks and in it, AD106 seems to be beating TU104 pretty consistently and winning some and losing some against GA104. Now, what are all these numbers if you're not uh, like, like GA104, I, what, what, what do you, AD106. So these are the GPU like actual die names that go inside the graphics card that you buy. Now, 8106, we don't know for sure what that will be. It could be a 4060, 4060 Ti, something like that. You know, the uh, 8102 is what's in a 4090. We've got the 8103 and the 3080. You know, as the, the, the number at the end gets bigger, you get the weaker die, that kind of a thing. Um, so the GA104 would be a, um, a 3070 Ti, most likely here, and then TU104 would be a 2080 Super, if we're looking at those full dies. And that does seem to be the case because we did get this other slide here where you see the stats of each of these up against each other. So we can see that like 8106 has more CUDA cores uh, than the TU-104, but less than GA-104, but it has much higher boost clocks and a bit higher memory clocks um, than, than its competitors, although at a lower bus width and um, lower memory bandwidth. However, it then has a huge amount of increase to the L2 cache, which is how I think NVIDIA has been trying to make up for the, the decreased uh, you know, memory bandwidth. Anyway, um, you can see all these tests and, and comparisons, but I don't want to dwell on this forever because again, the quality of the source, who knows? Um, apparently this was um, popping up on the chip hell forums and then the post got removed maybe removed because it revealed too much, maybe removed because it was completely fake, who knows? And um, I guess Harukaze5719, uh, who posts a lot of GPU stuff on Twitter, um, had the screenshot and details up there before it was taken down off of Chip Hell, and then now I found it at this tech power up, and all my sources will be in the description. Now, why would people be interested in something like an 8106? Well, one thing is it should be showing up in laptops very soon. And uh, then it'll probably take a little bit longer before we start seeing desktop GPUs, like I said, like a 4060, something like that. Now in laptops, uh, we'd expect to see the 8106 be a 4070, but in desktop cards, I think it would make more sense as a 4060 or 60 Ti, but again, none of that is officially confirmed. Remember that, for example, a 4090 laptop GPU is more like a 4080 desktop GPU. Um, in this generation, so do keep that in mind. Now, this is a videocards.com article showing off the 8106 and 8107 screenshots where the originally source for, uh, original source for this, you can see quite clearly, was Moore's Law is Dead, um, who is, you know, well-known uh, leaking GPU leaker channel, all of that. Um, so the interesting uh, part of this is like, hey, look, it's a square. Um, well, it gives you some of the size uh, measurements here. So like 8107 between 150 to 160 square millimeters, 180 to 190 on the 8106. And then you can take a look and you know compare that against what we know about you know 8102, like I said, um, uh, 8103, 8104. And then you know we know all of these from the 4090, 4080, and 4070 Ti. Um, so the 8106 is size-wise a big step down from 8104, and then 8107, uh, a little closer to that one. Um, so we still have some questions about uh, all of that, how it'll perform, but interesting leaks. Now, I thought this was pretty interesting. So um, we, we should be seeing vi uh, RTX video super resolution coming soon. It's apparently now already supported in Chrome, but won't be active until you get a driver update from NVIDIA. Now, uh, if you missed this, this was in one of NVIDIA's official announcements. We know this is a thing coming. And it's basically taking the AI upscaling idea, but applying it to video that you're watching in your Chrome web browser. Now, initially, at least, it's only supposed to support uh, 3000 and 4000 series NVIDIA cards, um, but should eventually, I, I believe, be uh, supporting the 20 series. It looks like confirmed, but to be supported later. And again, we should be expecting a driver at some point this month, and NVIDIA did demo this. Their demo looked very impressive, uh, you know, upscaling a 1080p stream to 4K, that kind of a thing. Um, but it'd be interesting to see how it works in reality. 
No, uh, what is this? Well, over on Billy Billy, we're seeing um, a well-known, uh, you know, I, I can't read it here, but I believe this is Golden Pig Upgrade. <laughs> um, so let's look at the videocards.com article talking a bit more about this, uh, sharing first performance figures for AMD's RDNA 3 integrated GPU. So um, this is the 780M. So a lot of people are very interested in how does RDNA 3 perform in the mobile form factor, especially as an integrated chip. That's where the 780M comes in. Of course, this is not supposed to be released yet, but if we do believe uh, the golden pig, uh, then, uh, what are we seeing here? Well, we're seeing some time spy scores. And um, this is interesting because if you compare it to the scores you would get from the um, predecessor of the 680M, this does seem to be a nice uplift, although, you know, if you compare the lower 780M score versus the higher 680M score, there's not a huge difference there. But again, the lower 780M score is at a 25 watt configuration. If you allow it to go up to 54 watts, uh, then we're seeing a, a more marked improvement over the previous generation. Now this is not a uh, full official reviews and all of that, so we don't wanna take this as guaranteed 25% uplift or anything like that. But um, I'm excited to see what what happens with these APUs. Um, you know, personally, I'm really interested in a lot of the little handheld uh, PC type, you know, Steam Deck competitor type things out there, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Now we're getting this tweet from Power Color, Devil's Best Friend, do you want to guess? Coming soon, EK Water Blocks. Um, so what this definitely has to be is Power Color, uh, while they have their Red Devil air coolers uh, on their AMD GPUs, uh, you know, uh, their high-end high lineup, they also have a history of a Liquid Devil series. Um, which does feature EK water blocks on the um, on the actual design. And that looks like an EK with a Red Devil logo. So I think we'll be getting a Liquid Devil some kind, sometime soon from Power Color. So if you're looking at water cooling your 7900, stay tuned to that. Now MSI finally has their RX 7900 series uh, cards up for sale. Uh, they did not make a reference design and took their time getting their um, custom designs to market. It looks like they are now finally for sale on Newegg, uh, according to videocards.com. That's the only place they could find them, and I couldn't find them anywhere else either. Um, and the pricing here seems to be $1,100 for the XTX and $950 for the XT. Um, so that is $50 over MSRP on the XT model and $100 over MSRP on the XTX. Although the videocards.com article is saying 200 over here, but I don't think I'm misremembering. It was a one, it was a 999.99 MSRP here. So um, just looks like a typo right there in the source. Now. Um, in more AMD news, while there's the 7000 series getting some driver updates, a lot of people with the 6000 series have been wondering, when are we getting a driver update? There's been no day one game drivers for the new games that have come out. There's been no updates since, I think, first half of December. Um, now, Frank Azor at AMD is finally tweeting about this, addressing the issue, saying, we're working on new AMD Radeon drivers for 6000 series and prior gen cards aiming to release them within the next two weeks. We'll provide another update if we run into any delays, and as we get closer to posting them, thank you for your patience. Now, in the uh, Twitter feed, there were some replies questioning, will this driver support both RX 7000 and older cards, or is it a separate release? Because in the past, AMD has just had one GPU driver that you download really no matter what, uh, you know, as long as some fairly, <laughs> you know, fairly recent-ish in the last several years car GPU, it, it should, you know, they had a unified driver, right? No matter what you get. Uh, however, it's been split. Since the 7000 series came out, you bought, download the 7000 series driver or the 6000 series driver. Anyway, Frank is saying, we remain committed to our unified driver strategy and we're working to get there again as soon as possible, but there's no, um, uh, there, there's no specific, uh, you know, it, as soon as possible. Okay, but when is that? Is that three years from now or is that, you know, in two weeks when this happens? I think he would have confirmed if it was this one coming in two weeks that went back to the unified uh, driver strategy. So if that's not the case, 
um, you know, I wonder if that's even could be what's having something to do with the delays is maybe they wanted to be unified and are having trouble doing that. And then just, I, I don't know. That's speculation. Let's move on. Now, speaking of more affordable GPUs, how about from Team Red and what sort of performance should we expect? I found an article about it at WCCF Tech. However, their source is Red Gaming Tech on YouTube, who has leaked accurate information about AMD uh, stuff in the past. Although that's not to say that everything um, he predicts on his channel ends up coming to pass. That could be that things change behind the scenes and it was accurate at some point could be the quality of the sources. So again, I will just say leaks and rumors, take it with a grain of salt, uh, but where are we at with this? Um, it has some like boost clock and, ah, I shrink myself out of the way. <laughs> um, clock frequency targets, CU counts with the 7800 XT at 60 CUs, 7700 XT at 48. Um, you know, like I said, boost clocks, infinity cache, power targets at 280 watts and 225 respectively. Um, all of that. Now, what's with 16 gigabytes, 12 gigabytes, 256-bit uh, bus, 192-bit bus, but I think what's most interesting is, okay, what do all these stats actually mean in terms of performance? Apparently, uh, the 7800 XT performance is targeting about 6950 XT performance, uh, which would be slower than a 4070 Ti. Um, now that's pretty interesting because that means that the 7800 XT is not going to be a massive generational uplift from the 6800 XT, but considering where the 7900 XT already was performance wise as not a massive step up from the 68, sorry, from the 6950 XT, um, I guess it makes sense that we wouldn't see this. So, so I guess in my opinion, this performance level is fine-ish, as long as the price is right to go with it. Because for example, a 6950 XT, uh, you can already find them brand new at like 699. So um, if they uh, had the 7900 XT as a $900 MSRP, how, how far are they cutting this one down? Uh, anyway, and if it's slower than a 4070 Ti at $800 MSRP, anyway. The 7700 XT, apparently performance targeting RX 6800, notice the non-XT. Now 6800s can already be found brand new for $500 or less. Um, he's saying that it should be about on par with the 4070. So, I mean, again, I think price is everything. Performance tiers are what they are and you call them whatever you call them. And sometimes it's disappointing if you don't see a big generational uplift in naming scheme per performance, but in my opinion, it's price to performance uplift that's the most important thing. So we'll see where we go uh, with that. Now, if we go down to Navi 33, it looks like the 7600 XT and 7600, uh, again, um, with some specs, looks like eight gigabyte cards with 128 bit buses, although um, slightly slower memory on the 7600 non XT and higher boosts on the XT version. Um, Performance target wise, it looks like 7600 XT at 6650 XT slash 6700 XT. So maybe kind of falling in between there. Now, given the 6650 XT is not much faster than a 6600 XT. If the 7600 XT is really not much faster, that's kind of disappointing, but you got the slash 6700 XT in there. So this is kind of a, a wider performance range here. Don't know what exactly to make of that, but then the RX 6700 non-XT, apparently performance coming in around 6600 XT and then source or slash 6650 XT. And again, that's only a few percent difference here. Now the 6600 non-XT was, you know, 15 to 20%, you know, the, the XT version was, was 15 to 20% faster than like the non-XT version in the previous generation. So this would be indicating, you know, something like that 20-ish, if it was a 6650 XT, maybe a 20-ish percent uh, performance uplift gen on gen. Now, again, the question is pricing because you can get a 66, uh, like a 6650 XT for around $270, um, sometimes less. So if these are coming in, you know, in the well over $300 range, it's honestly not gonna be that exciting, but we'll see what it is. Uh, has has a bit to say about the mobile SKUs and things like that, um, saying that you know performance might be lower than Nvidia or higher power. In other words, they might be struggling with the power consumption 
issues. In other words, N NVIDIA's newest architecture has been more energy efficient than AMD's, and in the mobile space, that becomes more relevant because um, it, you're less able to just bump up the power <laughs> um, without affecting you know, all the battery life and thermals, everything. Uh, now, in other AMD-related uh, news, but more in the um, processor side of things, so AMD's Phoenix is about 26% faster than Rembrandt in a uh, leaked uh, benchmark from a Chinese tech outlet, it looks like. Now, um, this is a Cinebench score. And again, this is the uh, one of the CPUs that would come with that 780M mobile graphics that I was talking about earlier. So it'll be an interesting total package. Now, um, the single score is not shown here, although the uh, leaker claims that it would be around 1,800 points. Um, although again, we didn't actually see that score here. Now, it looks like it'll be fairly competitive as it stacks up against the 1200 series from, uh, from Intel, but we'll have to see how it does against the 13 series from Intel when those come out. And these should be coming out in March. Now, there's another leaked benchmark out here. This one's Passmark, and this is from the higher end uh, Ryzen 9 7845HX. I believe this would be like the Dragon Range CPUs, but not the highest end ones. So the kind of your desktop equivalent almost type class. And this goes up to 12 cores. It's doing quite well here in Passmark. Um, at the top of the current list, even beating the 12900HX pretty handily. And if you compare it against um, a previous generation uh, AMD chip like the Ryzen 9 6900HX, which scored 24640 here, you know, that's a almost but not quite doubling of the performance. But again, it has more cores because the previous generation from AMD uh, didn't go up to 12 cores on this. Now, if you look at um, the announcement for these from AMD, this one that we're seeing leaked there is actually uh, not the highest end one. It'll go up to a 7945HX with a 16 core 32 thread configuration. And the one we were seeing there was the 12 core 24 thread variation. Um, so really interesting uh, to see how powerful those will get in that mobile fa form factor. Now let's move over to some Intel news. Last news video, I talked about Intel had released a new driver update and had done some price drops claiming um, some big performance gains. And I said, well, it'd be nice to see somebody test those out. I might when I have the chance, but I've been pretty busy. Again, this is a, it's a hobby for me, guys. I, I do have a full-time job. A lot of people are like, uh, benchmark the new in in Intel update. I I'd like to at some point, but it looks like Gamers Nexus has definitely beaten me to it um, and did update their benchmarks. And I'll just point you to their video for all of the details. It'll be linked in the description. Uh, but basically, yes, compared to launch drivers, there have been major updates and even compared to a more recent but not launch driver, um, some definite upgrades. Now, that being said, I think there's still a lot of issues to iron out for the Intel Arc GPUs, um, but they become more interesting as they continue to update things. Um, now, in other Intel news, man, there's getting to be so many... CPU SKUs for this generation from Intel. It's getting hard to keep track of. And now it's looking like available in China only, at least for now, possibly forever. There's not just a 13400F, there's a 13490F, and apparently also not just a 13700F, there's a 13790F. There's less information available on the i7, but on the 13490F, um, there is more information available. This appears to be uh, higher clock speeds and more cache. So it should be a better uh, gaming CPU than the 13400F without the 90 on it. Um, apparently two plus 200 megahertz on the clocks and more cache. And again, less info available on the um, i7 version here. Also interestingly, apparently the Chinese pricing when converted is down to $186, whereas the 13400F, which shouldn't be as good, is at $196. So, interesting. But again, for now, this appear, at least, this appears to be a Chinese-only uh, um, CPU. But if you're getting confused with how many different <laughs> uh, 13th-gen CPUs we have here, 
you might not be alone, but here's where these would kind of slot into that, uh, that lineup. And again, less known about the i7 version. So let's move on. If we do want to talk about other Chinese exclusives, um, in GPU news, I don't want to spend too much time on this one because this one is not something I think many people in my audience would be buying. But in, there's a Chinese More Threads, MTT S80 GPU that came out a while back. Um, this is a Chinese design, although there has been some speculation, I should be careful saying speculation, about how much intellectual property uh, may have been um, borrowed from, uh, from NVIDIA. Uh, but anyway, it, it's interesting because it's a, you know, a, a Chinese exclusive um, uh, gaming GPU. Now, someone did get their hands on it and actually start testing some things out, like can it run a crisis, for, for instance? And apparently the answer is yes. Uh, the original Crisis does run, but only in D3D9 mode, um, because apparently this this GPU has a lot of issues with what types of um, what types of games it can support, what types of software it can support. Some very old versions of 3D Mark would run on it, and it was tested and um, against an Arc A770 and uh, did not perform well against the Arc A770. <laughs> And apparently it can support DX9 and DX11, but not fully. It's looking like DX11 uh, only goes up to feature level and, uh, level 11.1. So, you know, it's interesting in that this card supports PCIe Gen 5, has 16 gigabytes of GDR6 memory. Um, but yeah, it's looking like due to game support list, uh, it's not something that most people outside of China would probably be interested in. Now, another uh, little quick thing to mention, Asus is now offering a, a trade-in deal. So if you wanna buy certain um, new NVIDIA GPUs, you send in your old GPU, they give you up to 300 uh, cash back. Um, and I think this is in uh, Britain only. Um, now, the date range on this deal is from February 17th through uh, uh, sorry, from, from, from February, so now, sorry, 3rd of February through March 17th. Now, the exact cards that are available on this and participating retailers uh, are listed here, but um, I was curious what kinds of a deal deals they were actually offering here, and now it looks like if, if, this is if you're buying a 4080 or a 4070 Ti, um, as far as the models go here, and then, and only these specific models from Asus. Now, what are they gonna give you for your trade-in? Looks like a GTX 1060 will get you 90 pounds, uh, 1070 will get you 90, 1070 Ti will get you 100, and you know, and so on and so forth. So they're not, these are the, what they're accepting and how much they'll give you for it. It looks to me like you could get more just selling it yourself, but for people who just wanna trade things in and not deal with selling it themselves, uh, apparently this is what you'll get, although I'm sure they'll have to verify the quality of it, you know, subject to inspection, trade in, and all of that. Thought I'd at least mention it. We also have this Steam uh, hardware survey in January results, uh, still showing that the most popular GPU is the 1650, followed closely by the 1060 and 3060 laptops. Um, 2060 and 1050 Ti coming in uh, close behind on those heels, and we uh, don't see a 3000 series desktop GPU until the 3060 coming in at one, two, three, four, fifth in terms of desktop parts. Now, uh, I was scrolling down to see when, where will we see any of the uh, like new generation stuff? Is, is any of that making the list? Uh, first thing I could find is the 4090 at 0.46% um, of the survey as the most popular from the newest uh, new cards out here. Um, the 3090 Ti, it is ahead of the 3090 Ti, and it's ahead of the 4080, which is at 0.26%. Anyway, um, uh, 4070 Ti coming in at 0.1%, and then I couldn't find any of the new uh, AMD cards on here. Uh, the 1630 at 0.04%, so there you go. Anyway, interesting stuff, but let's move on. Um, speaking of NVIDIA GPUs, NVIDIA is rolling out updates for uh, Discord performance bugs. So this was hitting the news a while back that uh, certain NVIDIA GPUs would perform worse when Discord was open ever since the Discord update that uh, released like AV1 uh, encoding support. 
Now, it looks like NVIDIA is now rolling out a fix for this, so GeForce users can now download an app profile update for Discord. This resolves a recent issue where some GeForce GPUs memory clocks did not reach full speed uh, with uh, Discord running in the background. If you weren't aware of that issue, hey, now you're aware of that issue, and you could dive more into it in the link in the description. Now, um, I do want to mention that the first consumer PCIe Gen 5 NVMe SSD uh, is out in Japan, but apparently it has a loud fan. Now, this is really frustrating to me, and I hope this isn't a, a thing we see on a lot of PCIe Gen 5 or something that's even necessary on them, uh, because for me, one of the main advantages, I understand that, okay, PCIe Gen 5, you got the speed advantage. That's a huge part of it. And with these higher clock speeds comes, uh, you know, more thermal issues, all of that. So I, I see why it's there. But for me, one of the great things about, um, you know, the move to solid state drives away from hard drives was not having moving parts and noisy stuff in the PC. And apparently, uh, the report here from Momomo uh, US on Twitter is that this fan was louder than the stock cooler for the i7-13700K being used for the testing. And that's not a good sign. Now, the thing did run fast, and um, this uh, is available in Japan for around uh, $385 uh, US equivalent. Now, if you're interested in some other GPUs, how about uh, buying a 3DFX Voodoo um, which has apparently gone o over $10,000 bid. Now, this is a piece of GPU history, and admittedly was before the time where I paid a lot of attention to this, but 3DFX with their Voodoo cards um, were at one point, you know, top of the line, and then they kind of fell away. This was a prototype of what would have been their next card if it had ever hit the market. So this is a big piece of uh, GPU history. Um, so not entirely surprising it's hitting some uh, high dollar value uh, amounts here. But anyway, uh, last thing I'll mention, uh, kind of a PC. I know not a lot of people use their Joy-Cons on their PC, but some people do. Anyway, there's been a Joy-Con drift lawsuit. Apparently, an American judge has now dismissed it, and I don't like why they've dismissed it, because the EULA, you know, those uh, things that you just click agree to without even paying any attention to them, many of them disallow lawsuits, including this one. And apparently uh, when uh, the, uh, the lawsuit tried to argue that, well, the kids playing the console aren't really able to enter that agreement, uh, the judge said, well, the parents are the de facto owners. They did agree to it. It dis disallows lawsuits and so uh, threw it out. I think it's a bad policy to just allow, actually uphold the fact that an EULA can just say, and you can't sue us, and actually uphold that in court. Um, so I did want to throw this in the news here. I was going to talk a little bit more about this, but Puget Systems has um, done, like, okay, so I do a lot of very thorough gaming tests on GPUs. A lot of times I'll get comments, why not go into more uh, content creation productivity? I'll point you towards this Puget Systems review where they've now done the 40 series and 7000 series for AMD in a wide variety of tests, including DaVinci Resolve, Adobe Premiere, uh, a Topaz AI Suite, Unreal Engine, V-Ray, Oct uh, you know, Octane, Redshift, Blender, all of that. And I'm not going to spoil all of the results, but I will say that one reason I don't go into this is there's no quick test to just tell you how well they do in content creation because the individual app you use and even the individual settings you use in that app, like what type of file are you doing or what type of production are you doing in DaVinci Resolve or Premiere Pro uh, has a big impact on it. So it's really best left for special reviews uh, for productivity use cases. And this good one is out now. Um, also, Puget Systems did an update on SSD reliability. This is kind of a follow-up to how I've been reporting on the um, 990 Pro SSDs having some reliability issues reported recently. Um, Puget Systems is actually mentioning that the 980 Pro, specifically the 2 terabyte version, was having some uh, reliability issues that has been um, fixed with a firmware update that you might want to look into. Now, I have a 980 Pro 2 terabyte that I might want to look into whether I should get this uh, <laughs> firmware update for myself. So I thought that I'd throw that in there, but hey, we're hitting 30 minute mark and I've got to start getting my kids up for school. So I hope all of you have an excellent day.